about me. <laughs> I'm Romero Jennings, Director of Makeup Artistry here at MAC Cosmetics. And part of my job is really, it's education, it's storytelling through the art of makeup artistry. So basically I travel the world to do editorials, shoots, interviews, all of that. Um, and also I sit in product development meetings, creating things like the number 89 Lash, which Gregory, myself, and Marina from Product Development created, which is perfect. And I have like pieces of it on right now, as you can tell, I have not finished, but we're gonna do more with this class. We designed this lash basically so that it is your go-to glamour lash. This is your, this is your occasion lash. And it's number 89 from Mac, it's called Megastar. Just remember it. So let's talk a little bit about Tiffany Johnston, who is our commentator today. Tiffany, are you in the house? I'm here, I'm here. Hi, Tiffany, how are you? <laughs> Hi, babe, I'm doing well. Yes. I was just gonna talk about, it's the number 89 Megastar Lash. Right here. It's Perfect. so dreamy and wispy and good. I'm gonna add more pieces later. This is just the, beginning. You could see I'm missing a piece here, but it's right here ready to go. So I'm going to just glue it on in a second. But Tiffany, Tiffany has worked on this project with me with No Ceilings, the Bellagio, the Mayfair Supper Club in Las Vegas, which was an amazing, amazing job. Did you like it, Tiffany? It was such an incredible experience because I Obviously, I, I was there at the development stages when you were just first, you know, I, ideating what these looks were going to be like and how they were going to transpire. And the fact that this finished look is so extreme and over the top, I just hands down to you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let's pop the look up if Jake is a veil, just to show you guys what the finished look is as I pop my other lash on. So guys, it was really amazing because when you're thinking about creating looks for a show, right, you're thinking about multiple performers, you're thinking about the makeup lasting, you're thinking about pro long wear, Mac pro products, what am I going to use to keep this in place? This has to happen very quickly too, because many times these artists don't have a lot of time and I've seen them put the makeup on in less than 40 minutes. And that's a challenge. I'm going to do that today for you guys. I'm going to try to do it as quickly as possible. But um, Tiffany helped me um, when I couldn't go to Vegas to help with foundation matching, helping to create the look. Also stayed on to help educate all the performers because they actually need to put the, put the makeup on themselves daily. We were there just to sort of show them the look, walk them through it you know, have them look, we, we learned together actually. So it was really a great process. And Tiffany, I just want to thank you for that. Thank you. It was fun. It was really, really fun, really amazing. So I'm going to pop on what I've done, guys, I guess I'll start this way is I thought to prep by adding a liner and the liner that I have on right now with nothing else underneath it, because it's indestructible is the dual dare. So this liner is really incredible something recent at mac and it has a felt tip at one end and a twist up waterproof pencil on the other this is amazing the most important thing i want to tell you about this is the formula it is thick and rich and it's the darkest black that you're going to get it is really really amazing so I love this. This has been my go-to, my new favorite. Tiffany's going to throw it up on the board so you guys can see what it is. But it's the Dare Black Dual Dare All Day Waterproof Liner right here. And it makes a really incredible, incredible line. I'm not great with liner on myself, so I'm telling you. It can be a challenge. And especially when your eyes are mature and <laughs> you need to make sure to have symmetry, even though the eyes are not symmetrical, sort of like my curl today. Notice that there's one side that's longer and bigger and that's because my hair is normally flipped that way with a bit of a point and this tiny little baby here, right? So we have both. So with the liner, it's great because you can create balance and symmetry no matter what type of eye shape you have and especially for mature. And when, if, you, if there are mature people on this call and are saying, well, I can't do that, guys, you know my mom, right? 
<laughs> shameless plug, but Romero's mom on Instagram, she has done this Gatsby look many, many times. And Tiffany, I know you've commented on some of her looks and she loves dress up. She loves going out and my mom could wear a serious liner and lashes too. And I put the number 89s on her. All right, so I'm just gonna pop a little right here. So let's get my magic mirror and just do that and show you guys. So easy, let's bring it down. Just playing with placement. I might put this on the outer and cut a smaller for here. Let's do that. So. What I love is if you're doing lashes on yourself, I think it's just easier for you to, oh, that's kind of cool, to cut and put in sections. And let's see if we can bend her down a little. Yeah, let's leave that. All right, so now I've cut a smidge. And let's talk about lash glue since we're doing this. So, I'm using the Black Duo, and what I love about this is the applicator. So you could even go back, and especially for performers, that it's your own glue so you can touch it against the eye. You can go back and retouch, especially if something is kicked up in the corner, you were performing, it got really sweaty, a lash kicked up, you're, you're in between um, gigs. You can always go back as you're touching up and just um, re-glue without pulling the whole lash off. So it really is a time saver. Make sure you get this one. And it is the duo with the applicator on it. It is genius, I'm telling you. And because it's black, it just adds to the depth of what we're doing. All right, mirror time. Let's get close. Okay. Let's put it down here. Mm, much better. So you see what I did? I just put the inner here pop it on, mm, much better. I like that it's just feathered out. So you can put it on where you get this beautiful full fan, but because my eyes are a little more mature <laughs> and because um, of the shape that I want it to elongate a bit. So, um, all right, I started with a little liner as I showed you and um, the lash but I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the process of designing this look. So it was really interesting because maybe what I'll do is, I'll talk and work, right? Let me do some foundation. And we're gonna put up next the Studio Fix Stick Foundation. Oh, and we could put up also full coverage. What I loved is that I put full coverage for the performers because it's a huge pan, it lasts for months, they can, really, really go through it and um, it lasts for a long time. So, and the full coverage gives maximum coverage, sweat proof, it'll stay 24 hours if you powder it well. So it's an amazing formula and that's the one I used designing the look, but I also love the matte stick foundation. So Romero is using NC35 and I have here the NC60, which I'm using for contour. Um, and then I'll talk about designing the look. So honestly, I met with No Ceilings Entertainment and I met with the Bellagio, the team at the Bellagio. I met with the people from the Mayfair and we got to see, Tiffany and I got to see the Mayfair as, as they were building it. It's one of the premier spots and views overlooking the Bellagio Fountain in Vegas. And you can go outside onto the terrace. You, the most, this restaurant and supper club has the most amazing selfie options. It is gorgeous. I can't even tell you the amount of money they spent on it, but they told me, and it's crazy, but it's an amazing space. So I had to think about all of this. I'm thinking about the costumes. I'm thinking about the lighting. I'm thinking about the stage. I'm thinking about the proximity of the audience as well as the performers themselves. Like how close is the audience? Where is the lighting? How much light is there? What color is the lighting, right? and also how much they're performing. Because some of these guys are swinging on hoops and doing somersaults and crazy. So and when I looked, it's a very vigorous show. When you leave, you, you leave really energized and you know, 
I got to see it many times over back, backstage from the, the makeup room, but also up, up front and close for many opportunities. It, it's amazing. So taking all of that into consideration, I created face charts. I presented face charts to them. The face charts were approved. I met with the creative director and stylist and, and costume designer. And actually one performer, this main performer, LaShonda, has maybe eight or nine different changes. And within that, maybe five or six hair changes. Okay, I said I was gonna talk and work, right? So I'm using the Studio Fix stick and I'm using my 139 brush and 159 brush, sorry and applying and press, 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 press. Really packing it in. You really just wanna get full maximum coverage. This needs to really perform on camera. You wanna make sure it's not going to be sweat proof. Look at the difference here where you could see where my stubble <laughs> is coming in and this really covers everything, right? And look how amazing is that? Stippling, just tap, tap, tap super easy. So you can actually apply the foundation in minutes. Honestly, like super, super quick. And look at the difference in coverage now that you can see on both sides. Tap and stipple, tap and stipple. And if you've been sloppy with your liner, you could do a little cleanup by emphasizing the liner by just doing that. And you could see where there's no foundation that you could see more shiny and a bit more red and rosy, right? So I love using this golden tone because it's really neutralizing all the pink in my skin, but still keeping it goldy. Right here, where I had a bit of breakout. Yes, Romero does get acne, guys. It doesn't stop at any age. I'm just letting you know. You can stipple and get your maximum coverage here. And again, you can use the full coverage foundation, which is the one that they, I have for them um, in the dressing room, or you can use the stick. So I love either one of these. I really like to lighten right in between the nose, and that's just so that we can contour and glam it up and really like get all snatched, you know? So here you could see that I'm just working up to the forehead, the giant forehead. But I did a special finger wave just for you guys today. So I did a little, a little curl because I was thinking of LaShonda and she might even be um, in this party that we have today, this Gatsby glam. Listen, I don't know why this is part of Halloween. This is my everyday. You guys see me look like this, right? <laughs> but what this means is you can actually shop your own makeup drawer and find a look and create a Halloween look, super easy. Can you imagine if you just like ordered a couple of pearls on Amazon, put on a tank dress, dress with a little bit of sparkle, or if you want it to be a dandy glam like me, you could just, you know, have your vintage um, Lagerfeld H&M collar. You guys remember that launch from like, year, like maybe it's 10 years ago. It's this giant collar that just sits on top of my shirt. <laughs> And I love it. So you can create this kind of fantasy, glam, Halloween look. It doesn't have to be scary. You could be cute too. You could be cute on mute. And I know that a lot of people aren't going out that you are going to celebrate with your pods or your friends and fam that are close and safe, or you guys will be on a Zoom like me. I will be on a couple of Zoom calls. I'm gonna Zoom surf that day because I'm going to be done. It, this might be one of the looks too, I'm telling you. Yes, fantasy glam for Halloween every day. Tiffany, you said it right. All right, so let's get these lids going, right? Check it out. Same, NC35. Just get it on. Just go, 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 right? And I have full confidence that even without putting foundation on first or priming the eye, that this liner is not going to move. It's definitely going to stay in place. So I love, love, love this liner. Yeah, just re Uh huh. Mm -hmm. In place. Yeah. Holding up. All right. Here we go. All right. So what I'm looking for when I design the look and when I actually meet the artist, the performer, I want to incorporate some of their personality within the look. 
So that's something that I always think about. I'm just doing this because my giant ears are red and I can see that. So if I took a photo, <laughs> it would be so rosy. So let's get rid of that. Romero, I have a question. Okay. I know that you started with like three or four face charts, mm -hmm. but, and of course, everything kind of migrated and changed. How many face charts did you come in with? And then how many did you end with? That's a great question. <laughs> Tiffany, you're right. You're right. I might have prepared, um, let's see, because there were like 19 performers, but um, you know, the performers are in groups. So I had to figure out like segments. Okay, what's the first segment? So they said the first segment, what's really interesting about this show is that it starts from sort of 20s glam jazzy club and ends in this sort of futuristic disco era where they're in fringe and sparkle and, but still wearing the same makeup. So within that, I had to design the look to last for that and maybe have one change. All right, to answer que <laughs> Tiffany's question, I might have given them 15 or 20 charts and then we narrowed it down to like five or six key looks. And um, yeah, that's what we did. Great question, Tiffany. So since we're on that mode, I wanna talk to you guys about the guide. So with creating these looks also, the performers have to do them, do the looks themselves. So um, I will show you a portion of the guide that I created. This is the gorgeous LaShonda. This is a shot that I took of her backstage getting ready as I was doing final touches on her for a special night. I think there's a special taping that night. So um, she's gorgeous. She really helped to inspire this makeup, right? And so within this guide, like here you'll see it starts from the beginning where it starts off, um, start off with skin refined zone, just in the T-zone with the 109 brush. Can you use same brush for cream foundation, right? So skin refined zone, and that's her color NW, NT45, sorry. Then another step here where I am just instructing about the brow. And you can see she's doing it here herself. So at this point, Tiffany, myself, and the MAC team in Vegas, shout out to the MAC team, amazing, amazing guys, um, help to create this. Listen, you're as good as your team. And if your team is good, you have success. So I always feel confident with the MAC team, no matter where I am in the world. And you could see here that we're applying um, the chroma line, this in basic red. Oh, you could use pink. I'm gonna show you the pink today. Waterproof mascara, really important. And I'll show you tips and tricks of that. And let's go to the next one. So just retouching a little bit of the brow and showing her how to get it to be a bit more arched, to do the highlighter underneath to camouflage any loose hairs. And here she is uh, placing a little bit of glue before applying the Swarovski crystal. And can you imagine how much product for a show? So it was really a lot. And here you could see LaShonda taping herself in her own, with her own phone, with the steps and me just printing everything out. So she has this book. She has a copy of this, the original, with all these images and notes that she can sort of go through to refresh her memory if she forgets where something goes. And I'm so proud of this because this is LaShonda doing the first pass, doing the makeup herself, right? Really, really incredible. She was so happy about this. And look how the makeup just looks sort of dreamy and there's movement to the eye. And that's really key for this. And I, I wanted this to work so well for the lighting and the show and so proud. And here you can see just doing some touches on her, that lash, that face chart that Tiffany was talking about here. So creating this, just even having that as a guide for, for the team. And of course, Another shot of gorgeous LaShonda, who is so photogenic. And he, right here, just at the Mayfair on the stage with her. So incredible, incredible, right? So there you have it. It's like, that's all part of the process too, is educating the performer on how to recreate this look on a daily basis, you know, and then giving the right, the right tools, the right tips and techniques and, and tricks. All right. so. I added before I started a little bit of Prep and Prime Skin Refine Zone as a base. This is a primer. But now that I have my foundation on, 
and you could see how shiny I am, which I really like because I exfoliate with the volcanic ash exfoliator to keep my mature skin nice and sheer <laughs> and glowy and shiny because that's youthful, just keeping it glowy, right? But for performing, you want to mattify. So check this out. I wanted to show you this over the foundation. And I showed the performers that they can actually do this too if they're touching up. I call this my liquid powder. It's called Prep and Prime Skin Refined Zone. This is my don't leave home without it. Romero, if you have one product on a desert island that you need, it's going to be this. It's going to be this and maybe I'll say maybe a light beverage, right? So cheers to everyone who has a beverage in their hand right now, whether it's coffee or Gatorade lemonade. I just made it look really fancy just to pretend. <laughs> I'm pretending to be grown up. All right. So Skin Refined Zone. It's a primer. You can use it before foundation, but I'm going to use it after. And I want you to watch and look in front of your eyes in seconds how it mattifies and blurs. Shiny spot, let's get it right here. So tapping is really important because tapping or stippling means that you're not going to damage your foundation underneath, right? And I have fine lines under my eyes. So, so that the foundation doesn't go into any fine lines, I like to just tap a little bit right on top. And look at the difference. See where I haven't done it, how you get this really sort of a glazed look, glass skin, which I love, but I want it to mattify and reduce pores. I have quite large pores around my nostrils. Oh, too close. <laughs> Just kidding. All right. So good. So good. Skin refined zone. And let's talk about moisturizer. So I started my morning with the Mineralized Time Check Lotion. The reason why I like this one, again, it's a mattifying lotion that hydrates the face, but it also plumps and smooths and helps to blur and reduce pores. So look how much more matte my nose is getting now, right? The lights here are quite bright, so you're not seeing the full effect, but you can tell how it almost looks fuzzy. Oh my God, I love it. This is like filter right here, honey. Filter, filter with Skin Refined Zone and the Mineralized Time Check Lotion. These are key. And then NC35. Let's move to contour, all right? Really, really important for a stage. So yeah, I used one formula all the way down. I gave myself a little bit more coverage where I have more of a depressed area. And I could see on this eye that this eye is a little more depressed sad, sad day on the side of my eye. All right, watch it. We're going to take a little bit more. And we're just, look at that, one already. Just pressing it in. And that's why I like this brush, because it's beveled. It comes to a point, so you really are just almost filling in that crease. Oh, gone, gone. <laughs> little puffy on this side, same technique. Get rid of you, puffiness. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I kept my fast response eye cream in the refrigerator, especially now in the winter that it's getting so dry here in New York. But if you need a little bit more boost, you can do that. The foundation is key. If you get a good foundation on, everything looks good. And I think it's looking really smooth. What do you think, Tiffany? Looking great, man. <laughs> Thumbs up. Thumbs so up. smooth and so, you know what I love is you're not too matte, you're not too dewy. It looks realistic, but it looks perfect. Exactly. Like this is what I would use for on camera or selfie, just like this, where it has a bit of a glow. I might powder in between. And since we're talking about powder, I'm going to use the Prep and Prime Pressed. And this lovely sponge from Artist Kit Company. I'm telling you, I love this little pizza sponge because you can tell what it's doing, right? Watch this. 
Mm-mm. Gone, gone, gone. Blurred, diffused, right in here. So you can use a wedge sponge also, but this is great because you can wash them. This is just the translucent powder. So any skin color can wear this because it's transparent. Let's get rid of that top shine right here where the lights are. I'm still leaving it glowy here and here because I want to play that up later. And I love to really press in right in the center. All right. So this is getting your foundation set, right? Not quite baking, but maybe just doing a casserole. We're not baking, we're just doing a casserole today. That liner is on point. I am loving this new liner. It's in the chat, guys, check it out. Everybody needs it. All right, Matt. Smooth, easy, in seconds, right? All right, so let's seal the deal, right? The way to do that is Studio Fix. And I am a C6, a Studio Fix C6. And I love this because it comes with a sponge here, so it keeps hygienic. You can use the sponge or puff. But I am going in with my... I'm gonna use a brush. You can also use this puff, but let's use a brush. So I'm using the number 133S, right? A soft bristle brush and just pressing in. Now look at the difference. Remember this ridge that was there that you guys saw? Look, it's almost gone. It's really gone, right? Studio Fix is the bomb, guys. I don't know if you could know, this has been around for a while, but I remember some Famous news reporters in the New York area coming into the Christopher Street location. And I didn't realize that they had to do their own makeup. And they bought makeup and I helped design the look for the makeup on camera. And I watched her, more than one, but her on camera that night. She said, watch, I'm going to do it tonight. And she did. And it looked amazing. Studio Fix. She was about a C4. She used Raisin Blush. And she was gorgeous. She's still on TV today. I'm just going to say a first name, Sade. I'll leave it at that. Mm -hmm. Channel 7, check it out. I'll leave it at that. She is amazing. All right, look, guys. Matte. Remember the shiny? I was telling you, even with my lights here, look how matte this is. All right, oh, let's get a little by the hairline. Oh, yeah. Maybe we could fill in the hairline a little. <laughs> We can do that too. That's a whole nother show. I'm just saying. <laughs> All right. Oh my God, I love this. Guys, this is Studio Fix. You just keep patting until you get the desired matteness. But notice that I'm leaving the gorgeous shine that's coming from the products that we used earlier and that I exfoliated today with the Volcanic Ash Scrub. So maybe that's the only thing. We'll just type it into the chat. You guys can check it out later. But that's part of having really great skin. Speaking about great skin, if you want to have it too, do you want to know my main tip? Wash your brushes. Wash your brushes. If your brushes are clean, your skin is in great shape. I'm just telling you because as you're someone that's as oily as I am, in the summer, I will tell you like I wash my brushes if I'm doing lives um, which I have been since we're all sequestered home <laughs> during COVID. So I wash my brushes once a day, sometimes once every other day, right? This is per a personal brush. I'm not talking about work. This is like me and my brush, right? So it's to keep your skin in really great shape. Oh, this liner is so good. I need Romero, to do like can you repeat what brush number that is? This is 133S. It's a soft, fluffy brush, white bristles. Do you see it there? Or is there no such brush? Is this a tester that I have from a previous life? My brushes are old, guys. I have them for a while. Well, that's what we do. We invest in our tools. Yeah. I just want to make sure that people know what brush you're using. 
Yes, yes, yes. It is 133S. And look at that. So you can do it with the puff, my favorite, again, right? I love it because you can just get in. So you know that I set it first by doing a little bit of a casserole, not necessarily baking, with glasses. My mom would love a pair of these. Oh, Mickey Mouse. Okay. Enough with the shenanigans, Romero. Get on the road. All right. So foundation is on. Let's now contour. NC60 Studio Fix Stick, right? So for stage, I like to do this half circle curve. Let's chisel the nose. Mm-hmm. And the reason why I like this stick is look, that you can really control it, right? Mm, I love that. 168 brush, guys. And let's do it. Tapping, moving, oh, alien. I love this. Alien. So everyone's always like, oh, Mary, your cheekbones are so high. Mm -hmm. right here. It's like cut sharp. This is what I love. Here we go. So yummy. I love that you can create this with, I fell in love with makeup all again during COVID, especially that I had to apply it on myself. I never have worn so much makeup in my life. And I realize the power of what it does. All right. Cheeks are uneven, right? Let's chisel down here. There's a little meat here. So let's chisel and get rid of that. Watch me. Here we go. Mm -hmm. Let's curve. Mm -hmm. And down. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's funny because I was in the new Mac concept store in Queens, New York, two days ago to check out all the technology. And we're taking pictures. And the manager said to me, what are you doing? I said, I have to fix myself. And she's like, why? She says, you're so slim, you look great. And I said, because I look lumpy in photos sometimes. Here's a great example of looking lumpy. You saw that there was a little bit of, little bit of cheek meat here. There you go. Guys, sculpting is so key. It's like doing filler and Botox. There's an art to that. Not that I would know at all. Just saying. All right. So let's blend out our nose contour with the number 280, uh, 286 brush, 286S. Soft, fluffy, it's, <laughs> sorry, it's more of a crease brush. Ooh, getting a little parched. I think it's time for a drink. Who's going to screenshot this? Shenanigans. Okay. Cheers to whatever you're drinking today. Coffee, tea. All right. So I love this because I'm just going to sculpt, sculpt, blend, blend, blend. So easy with this brush, right? Oh my God. And guys, this color is great on me because it is more of a gray ash, like an ashy brown. So it looks more like a shadow than it is a color, but it's a gorgeous, gorgeous foundation color. I want to meet the person that's this exact color because it means that they have gorgeous skin. So look in here again, let's just like get some serious chisel going. I'm even going to put a little on my brush and I'm going to use my mirror and let's actually, no, I'll use you as my mirror and just do that. I'll hold it here. So just scooping and blending, going right into the brow. This way you get the nose to really elongate and it really helps to arch the brow. So it's not about just skinnying the nose, but it's helping to elevate and give the face more expression, especially for performing. All right, it's looking good. We can chisel all the way down, but I don't want it too skinny. I just would prefer to have it elongate the by the top bridge, we can do a little bit more. I'm obsessed with contouring. I'm sorry, you guys that say you don't contour, it really is an art because everyone does it differently. Everyone uses different tools. And 
yeah, it just makes a huge difference. Okay, so for me, that's a, a little too much. So look, I'm gonna just blend some of it off. So it widens a little, it's a little too snatch, but you can snatch as much as you want or de-snatch, right? So let's like de-snatch. All right, let's do this, blend. So what I do, and I, I tell the performers, super easy, while you have this brush, just grab some more product and go in and do your crease, really bring it up and really bring it out. So we're now mapping, mapping out what we're doing um, with that color product. Look at the difference here. Giant eye, right? Tiny, giant. Yeah, this one is ready to serve. All right, let's do it here too. So it's one of my favorite tricks. If you guys saw my Instagram yesterday, I just did a campaign with Christian Cowan. And the model that I used, Aqua, who is gorgeous, she is amazing and her heritage is incredible we had a great conversation about who she is and where she comes from but i did this same technique on her and a really skinny line and a beautiful gold metallic lid with a little bit of orange and i used the um holiday collection for that which is amazing guys but um just saying that i use the same technique even though this is more for a show but i used it for the the, the um, campaign and it looked incredible. Looked so gorgeous on her. All right, next step. Take a lot on the brush and then just tap right in the outer. So you're gonna give yourself a bit more definition there. Same here, tap, 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 right? So it's really dark. Next step, grab a tissue. Take your excess off the tissue and now blend. Okay, blend, blend, blend and extend. This is really important. You're getting direction. All done still with the contour, right? That same contour that we used. Same contour. How incredible is that? All right. So it's a little dirty here. Let's clean it up, right? And I'm going back, going back with my foundation brush and I'm just going to sharpen and have it just blend out to nothing, right? Same here. So it looks a little dirty. Let's go back and sharpen. Let's lift those eyes. That's right. And blur the edge. Yeah. Really good. Next step, go back with your Studio Fix Powder Foundation. And now I'm going to go with this sponge, right? And press. Oh my goodness, look, look how it lifts. And I love this because it's really lifting the bridge and creating this dimension, this three dimensional look without using shine, without highlighting. I love this, it's my favorite thing to do. Now, now let's bake, let's bake with Studio Fix. Max iconic product that has lasted generations. Oh my God, this is so good. Now is the time that if your contour isn't straight, you can sort of shift to straighten it. Oh, I just realized someone's looking at us. Oh, hi, Romero, how are you? <laughs> Having a good day today with your glasses? And to even elongate, I widened here because <laughs> my nose is a little tiny here, which is, I think the proportion is off. We can all agree to disagree, but look at that. Right? All right, let's soften the stripes a little because it's a little like behind bars. So I'm just going back with the same brush that I used uh, to contour with and take the excess off and let's just move it around. Move it around. All right, so I think that's looking good so far. Yes, all right, Tiffany's got the notes going for you guys. And let's, um, let's get some color. Let's go for it. All right, you know what I'm using next, right? It is Chromaline Process Magenta. So I use the red, basic red on Lashonda, but for me, I'm thinking the, the process is gonna be strong enough. And the 266S, oh, 286S, sorry. That's this, again, same brush that we used before, grabbing a little bit. If you know, 
have you guys used <laughs> any products from Pro as yet? Because this would show up show up on any skin tone, any any skin tone. Wow, all this is looking really good, even close up with you guys, which I would be really sad if it didn't look as dimensional as it is and the cheeks are sculpted out. All right, ready? Let's do it. So what I'm doing is inner corner pressing. Grab a little bit more. I'm trying to be really sparing with it. Oh my God, it's looking so good already. This is Chromaline in process magenta. Yes, just making sure it is. And it's so easy. I'm telling the performers just dot, dot. Because you have your structure underneath already, right? And look how you could see this from the back of the room. With bright lights, it just magnifies. This is amazing. I love this product. So I know that you guys sorry can... to sorry to interject. Mm -hmm. Hello. It's me, Tiffany. Hello. Hi, Tiffany. Um, I want to talk about why you like chromaline. Is it because of its long wearing yes. attributes? Is it because of its clear color? Is it because of its creaminess? Is it because you can layer it with other things? Why do you like it so much? Because this we used a lot. Yes, yes. I've, uh, it's good that you said that, and I'm getting to that because I love the chromaline because it becomes waterproof. It's indestructible. It does not move. It layers really well. It's pigmented. So any of the performers, no matter what color they are, because the, the two key, there are two key performers. There's LaShonda and there's also a swing and she's in when LaShonda. So they're both really important roles and they're both really different colors, opposite side of the spectrum. And what I love, again, at Mac, it's about diversity, it's about inclusion, it's about creating products that work on all skin tones and chromaline, any color that you get, even white, is going to show up on the lightest and the darkest. And as Tiffany said, the color is sharp, the color is clear, the color is clean. And that's what you get with this. And I love, love, love chromaline and that you can layer. But if water was to run on my face right now, my hair would be gone, my face would stay in place, and the chroma line would look like you just put it on, and also the liner. I'm just saying. Good point, Tiffany. Thank you for that. All right. So now we're just moving it inward a bit, right? This one can come down a bit more. So I'm just balancing, looking straight ahead at you and balancing out. Oh yeah, so you could see the fire from across the room, right? Here she comes, yeah. Process Magenta is in the house. All right, now, outer corner, tap. I'm trying not to disturb my lash and liner. So easy, so easy. So if you were doing this with a powdered eyeshadow, you might get some fallout, you might. Not if you are using the Powder Kiss Powder, because I love this. This just came out though. So you can use something like this, which is amazing. This color is called work, 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 work. Well, just three works. Work, work, work. And this is something you can put on top if you wanted to have, you know, if you had one eyeshadow at home and you didn't want to go through all of this, and you just wanted to get on your Zoom call, throw some liner, a little bit of mascara and get the same effect, you can do that. All right, so here we go. Notice that I'm dotting <laughs> laughing at look at this whoop, 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 whoop. i feel a tiktok coming up are you guys following me on tiktok please do romero jennings shameless plug as easy as that so all i'm doing is leaving the center empty let's bring it in a little bit more and all you have to do is press and it gives you the effect the by doing the makeup this way, the lids appear giant. And we really haven't done like a crease shadow as yet. We're just adding color. We could stop there. We could stop here. So now let's go in with the art library palette. My favorite, I love this one. All right, so this one is flamboyant and 
as you can see in my notes, as I showed you earlier, um, we're going to use this color here. So maybe, Jake, now we can throw up the first um, photo so you guys could see. And you see LaShonda here applying the crystal to her eye. So this is just something that, um, that I had to actually get a tool for them to use. And you can use a tweezer, but I'm going to show you how to do it later. But I just wanted to show you that, you know, the steps as we go along the way. So that's coming up very soon in our program. So this beautiful rosy plum and press. And because we have that base shadow underneath, it's just fire. It's just like really bright, really intense. And all you're doing is pressing. And there's no fallout. There's nothing underneath, no crumbs under my eyes. Already looking really good. I'm feeling very Lashonda. All right. So when designing the look, I loved that MAC came out with this palette already because I'm able to say to Lashonda, you can use this as your crease color. You can use this to go over the red. You can use this for your brow. You can use this for your center highlight. Any of these would be highlighted. And that the performer that's really fair doing the same role as LaShonda could use the same palette because she can use the lighter shades here as opposed to the darker for her crease. So I love introducing this palette um, to the team because I thought this would be really ideal and super easy. So um, yeah, let's add a little bit more. And just to kick up the fire, I want to do a little bit of the work, 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 work. Well, it's just three works. Again, getting carried away. And this is the new powder kiss that just came out. So watch this. It's like instant. Look at the difference here. So it's making it less pink and making it more red. So it's closer to what we did with LaShonda. So now it looks like there's just a stripe in the middle, which I love. All right, really good, right? And what's great is when I blink and when we add the shimmer later, it's gonna be fire. Do people still say fire? Tiffany, tell me. <laughs> I think, fire, I think fire is a good, yeah. I say okay. even if they don't say it anymore, let's bring it back. All right, all right. So we could say fire. What we can't say is on fleek because that is ancient. All right, look at what I'm doing now. Taking the excess off the tissue and now we're gonna just do a little blending and a little extending. So this is important because I wanted to make sure that you could see the makeup from the side also, because as they turn and pivot, the camera would catch the color and the light. Well, whoever's taking the photo, right? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna do, still layer in, I want it to be even redder in here with the work, work, work. All right, next step, let's take our pencil brush. The pencil brush is game changing, the 219, and I'll tell you why. This brush is really, really important for doing smoky eyes, right? Smoky eye could be brown, a smoky eye could be red, a smoky eye could be anything, right? So we're going back and we're using our Process Magenta Chromaline, and this is what we're doing. We are going under, right? Right here. Mm hmm So simple. So easy. So in the original notes, as Tiffany had said, because we did makeup changes, and even though I submitted quite a few face charts and we chose maybe five or six, the thing is the makeup has to morph depending on the lighting, depending on costume changes. And even though they secured certain costume changes, there were changes within that. So I had to go back in and say, maybe we'll not do this, or maybe we'll, do, we'll add something. So really just being open to grow and change 
and having the makeup evolve is really important for me. Romero, while you're doing your liner, I want to mm -hmm. um, reiterate that you had to design this look that transformed itself through decades. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that you were really, you were working very closely with the um, costume designer, which was amazing mm -hmm. because the conversation between you two, I think, allowed you to take pieces from each decade and make it relevant so yeah. that the makeup didn't have to be changed 10 times. This is really key, yes. Yeah, talk about that process a little bit. All right, so you're totally right. I'm so glad that Tiffany was there. She's re remembering all the details. You're totally right, Tiffany, that yes, because there were so many costume changes, as I said earlier, then I had to make sure to design this one makeup that would... Um, really transcend all those decades as the, the show was progressing since they started off in a sort of uh, 20s glam, jazzy sort of environment and ended up in a sort of futurist, futuristic disco setting. With all of that, um, the makeup had to really transcend and work all those decades as well as suit different skin tones. So that was really tricky and key, but I had a really great relationship you know, with the costume designer, creative director, with No Ceilings Entertainment, with the Bellagio, with the Mayfair, with everybody. And because of that great relationship, we were able to come up with like the most amazing product. Like the, the finished product is so, so beautiful. And when you go to see the show, I can't wait till all of this is over because I really want to sit in the restaurant. Tiffany, let's meet in Vegas and go have a meal at the Mayfair Supper Club, right? Deal. Let's do it. And then maybe we could even invite somebody from our audience. Guys, I'm just saying it might happen. You could come with us. Yeah, we're going to do it for sure. All right. So we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Once everything opens back up, we'll do something. All right. Look at that. A little bit of work, work, work right on top. So what I really love also is that look at the inside of my eyes. You could see how white it's looking here. And that's because I put this rosy red around it. I love that because what it's doing is making the eye look bigger and brighter, right? As opposed to closing it with all this color that's surrounding it, right? So I'm just layering on that work, work, work. Let's put a drop back of this in the flame buoyant, this beautiful sort of burnt red to deepen a bit. Oh, and watch this. Because this brush is the right width, it's the perfect width for a smoky eye. No blending needed, nothing. It's just super thick and soft. And I'm telling you, you cannot get this with just a skinny brush and blending. This brush, the 219 pencil makes a big difference. I love using this for lip too. For a quick lipstick, it's amazing. All right. Mm, nice. All right, look at that. So now I'm feeling a little Adam's family with the center part and the red around the eyes, right? Don't you feel that too? All right, here we go. Oh You're my God. a little bit more glamorous than Adam's family. Sorry, I won't let you get away with that one. <laughs> Thank you, Tiffany. It's Adam's family glam. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. All right, I'm gonna stop because I keep going with this because as you're building, look how much deeper it's getting. So you're seeing it. Let's, you know what? Since we have this brush in our hand, let's go back and add a drop more. Let's pull it out here. All you have to do is tap right on top of the line. Oh yeah, let's add a little bit of fire. Oh yeah, same here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. All right, we're getting there guys, getting there. It's getting good. So let me talk to you about my mascara tip and trick. Starting today, we started with a little bit of lash, but what I normally do is it's really important to curl your lashes. I don't know how many people use a lash curler, but if you want to have like incredible lashes that look false, even though they're yours, you really need the half lash. I swear by this. I basically will crimp in three steps, but what's important, this being small, is that as you're crimping, you crimp and then you lift. And when you lift, it kicks the lashes up. Sometimes my lashes are turned all the way back that it's on my skin and I have to bend it back. You can only do that with this curler. 
the thing is if you have that big lash curler and you curl, you can't really pull all the way up because you have smaller lashes on the ends and the eye is curved, right? But this way you're just crimping and bending, crimping and bending. This is genius, guys. I'm just letting you know. And so now let's do, I'm just running through the notes to make sure, yes, we're all up to date, extended play mascara. So after curling, I use this mascara and I'll tell you why. It's like if you're curling your hair with a curling iron and you haven't put hairspray. The curl is not as sharp. It doesn't stay as long. So that's really key. So after curling, then I go in with the extended play and I could add a little so that it fuses the lash to my own. But because this is a performance that they could get sweaty, you know, sometimes it gets really hot in the club, gets hot up in the club, then I have them put the hot and naughty waterproof in black. And this formula is super dark. It really really shows up. Ooh, that looks good already. Yeah. So even with the number 89 lashes, I'm just making sure that my own lash underneath is dark and fused. Mm -hmm. It looks good. All right, let's clean up a little. Oh yeah. So I like going back with my foundation brush, whatever I have on it, and just lift and clean any, and there's, what's great is guys, there's no fallout, no smut with what we did, the technique, there's nothing. So the performer can just continue and get everything going. All right, so my trick is that I used Auburn pencil in LaShonda's brows, just to give them a bit more of a reddish cast and that it looks almost a little bit bleached in a way. I just didn't want it to be super dark. And part of the reason is that she had a red wig. So if I did a black brow on her, it would be too harsh. So I went in with Auburn pencil and then just feathered in a bit of color, gave her her extension. And in the beginning, we did this round brow, which was great. Her brow was really nice and thin so I could manipulate it. And I was really happy about that. But I wanted to make it easier for her doing the makeup daily. So I said, just follow your own brow shape. Make sure you have a really sharp line and then really clean it up with a bit of concealer. And she did that. And she, as you can see in the picture that I showed earlier, she did an amazing, amazing job. So this Romero, is- can you can you tell me what Auburn, what um, formula pencil is that? So or Auburn pencil really is a lip pencil, but the color is really good. So I wanted it to really pop on her. And this was the perfect product for that. And you could see that it's just sort of warming up my own brow, giving it a bit of rosiness, a little bit of a warmth, actually. And now I'm going back with an angled brush and let's choose the number 208 and let me use a little, have these mini, cons these little um, Q-tips handy so you could lift or clean up, which I made sure they ordered on Amazon. You can get these at Muji or just Amazon and it's great because you can really sharpen anything, right? All right, so let's go in with this deep brown here, this sort of eggplanty color and we're just filling in And again, this is the palette, which is Flame Buoyant. Can't believe I forgot already, I love this palette. All right, so you see how it's just a little bit redder here? We're gonna just deepen it so it's not as orangey. And then when we highlight, everything is gonna just pop. Fill in any spaces. Here's a space, <laughs> there's a space. Yeah, that's looking really good. So we, we're getting a bit of an arch, which I really like, right? Bringing it into the contour. Mm -hmm. A little extension, maybe too much. That's where our Q-tip comes in handy. And here we go. Mm hmm Sharp. 
sharp, right? I love that. All right, same on the other side. So because I love the color so much, and especially on LaShonda's gorgeous golden skin, I did auburn lip pencil to really warm up her brow. We could have used one of those colors from the shadow palette, but what I like about using the pencil, the pencil is wax based, right? And what I love about that is that it has staying power as opposed to just using a shadow by itself, which is why to make the eyeshadow, yes, could I get this look with just the work, work, work uh, powder kiss eyeshadow? Yes. But for someone performing, do I need it to last and stay in place and be true and, and work for all skin tones? Then that's where Pro comes in and the Chroma line, which I love and swear by. So, all right, let's do this. Let's arch this one. We're getting in with the pencil. Oops. And we're just going to arch it up. Extend. Feather, feather, feather. I'm loving that we're so far into this and that the skin is looking still pretty matte, which I'm happy about. Look, I'm going to throw a little bit of Studio Fix, whatever's left on the brush, which I think is looking really smooth and really good. All right, let's feather in. All right, let's go to our angled brush and flame buoyant and this deep plummy color here. And you know what, again, what I love about this palette is I would say to the performers that if you finished one of the shadows, you could ease, or one broke, let's say something happened, you can easily go to one of the others and still have something similar. So I love being able to propose a palette as opposed to just one eyeshadow. So that was really key for me that they wouldn't need to replace it as often because they can use other colors from the palette too. Okay, so just extending. I love this part. I love when the brows actually are coming, coming into the room. Welcome brows. Welcome. Nice to see you again. <laughs> All right. So now we're just going over that little reddish area to sort of tone it down a bit. Mm. I like how smooth, look how it just, this brush and the technique, this sort of stippling, this upward stippling, upward motion stippling that's happening is really just filling in that light space and extending this warmer area here. It's yummy. Let's extend now. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's do a little more here. checking for symmetry. Listen, they're in the same family. They are not twins, but we can bring, <laughs> we can bring this twin up a little bit higher and make this twin a little thicker to balance the other. Yeah, there's a little point there too. And I'm trying to figure out, do we add it or take it off? Let's add it here. Point. Hmm? Oh, I like that. All right. Yeah, so I like to give the performer the option to morph the makeup, you know? And if they made changes, they let me know, oh, we're gluing the stone here instead of here. So I love that. They're an amazing bunch. And when I see them again, it just feels like family. And Ashley from, um, from MGM, I just want to say a special shout out to you. And I'm thinking about you and you're amazing. And it was so great to meet you. So I love the team there in Vegas and love the experience of creating the look for the Mayfair Supper Club, which is what we're recreating here today. Mmm, looking yummy. Okay, so now let's quickly get into the shimmer. So in my note, I'll show you. And if you guys are just tuning in, you know that I had to create this guide 
for the performers that they will know the steps to take to create, recreate these looks. So you see, I'm showing you everything that I used today so far. Mm -hmm. And this was the tip here, was just saying that she could use, where is it? Let's go back. The, use the shimmery color as the highlight. Yeah, right here. Use with finger, place and pull down. Let's do that, shall we? Ooh, these lashes are good. Number 89s. The 89s, I will tell you again that myself, Gregory, and Marina from Product Development at Mac created this lash. What's amazing about the lash is it's called the Megastar lash. And it's that it is not flat. It's multidimensional here. So it's almost like layered. It's not just one curl, but it's layered. So it looks just flirty and really gorgeous. It really is your event lash. And I created this with Gregory and Marina because I know Gregory uses a lash like this. He was waiting for a lash like this for his celebrity clientele. But for me, it's great for like occasion and it's great for editorials. And I actually use this on my latest editorial. I just told you guys on Instagram with Christian Cohen, Christian Cowan, I want to say it right and the beautiful model aqua and you could see this giant metallic lid done with the holiday collection frosted firework and um also that she's wearing the lash and it looks amazing on her and it looks pretty good on me today too all right so back to the step i said take a little with your finger pull downward all it is look at this payoff right so this is this beautiful metallic and let's see what the color is called. It's Amber Lights. Do you guys remember Am Amber Lights from Mac? It is this iconic metallic shade. Amber Lights. How amazing is that? All right. Same thing here. That's the technique. Straight down the middle. Let's go. Mm hmm In the house. Love you, Amber Lights. You've been in my life for so many years. <laughs> All right, I'm taking a little 252 brush, nothing on it, and using it just to clean and diffuse and blur the edge here, right? Since we have this brush in hand, why don't we do the really light color, right? And this one is... What's the pointillism? And check this out. Fire. Right? Let's do the other side. Okay, let's clean up. Mm. We can't leave it like this. No, we have to blend. <laughs> All right. Romero, Gregory yeah. says your eyes look like magic. Thank you, Mr. G. Gregory <laughs> is in the house, you. Yes, Gregory, because, thank goodness, we were able to get this lash out this year, just in time for this masterclass. And I think you're using it for your masterclass coming up, too. So it's going to be amazing. All right. Looking pretty good. I really love this. All right. Let's do it one round of powder and a round of cheers to everyone. Whatever you're drinking today, whether it's coffee or Gatorade and lemonade <laughs> with some treats, then cheers. All right, so let's go back with a little bit of Studio Fix because I'm just, you can either powder with Studio Fix or the Prep and Prime Pressed, as I told you before, either one. You can use a wedge sponge if you really want it to get in there. Um, but I'm going back with my artist kit company. This one, I love this pizza sponge, right? And check this out. Let's press. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh, look how smooth this looks. It's like butter. 
I love this. This is like so, this is why I like Studio Fix powder. Mm, get rid of those lines, people. Let's smooth it out. Look at that. I did not look like this when I started. It did not look this smooth and this flat. Remember that depressed area on this one eye? We have eliminated, eliminated that. Oh my goodness, this looks good. Let's get the tip. Just keep patting it on. And I have to tell you, my nose is quite lumpy. And what I love about this is it really smooths it out. Yeah, it is, I'm just saying. Can you have a lumpy nose? Yes. <laughs> Do you have one, Romero? <laughs> yes. So check it out. No baking necessary. Maybe just a casserole. Oh, this is so good. Look how smooth that is. All right, I need to stop because I'm excited about this. It looks great. All right. That was with Studio Fix. You can use a brush, but I really know if you're going to perform, go back and just get it. Get it so that when you get out onto the stage, it is flawless. Mm. Yes, snatched, 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 even though there's no highlight. It's just matte, which I'm obsessed with lately. All right, we're getting close, we're getting close. Let's go and let's add the highlight, right? And the highlight is the in, in extra dimension. And the color that I'm using is called Whisper of Guilt. Right, and I'm gonna show it to you because it's here in my handy dandy palette that I'm gonna take one swipe with. It's this beautiful gold. And it's great because this, again, designing the makeup, I had to make sure that the color, but I had different colors. For the really fair, I used this beautiful lighter one here. So, and then there's like chocolate, all these colors. So I didn't just choose one, but I know that this Whisper of Guilt was the one that would work with most skin tones, and it does. And I'm ready to show you some serious highlight in the house. I'm going to use the number 240S brush. It's this fluffy, feels like a kitten paw, just tapping along. All right, you ready to see magic? <laughs> here we go. I'm taking a little of this. Mm hmm Lit. L I T. How amazing is that? It's like glass, guys. Oh my God. Let's do it. Let's do it. Mm. Oh my goodness. Fire. Tiffany, can I say fire? Every time you do, I think of a certain song. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm sure Monique would agree. Um, yeah, it, you can say fire all Thank day long. Thank it you. looks so good. Thank you, Monique and Tiffany, for allowing me to say fire because, yes, because this highlight is, and again, everyone's like, oh, Romero, your cheekbones are so sharp and they're so, <laughs> now you know, <laughs> they are not sharp. They are lumpy. They're uneven. I showed you that correction that I did here with the cheek meat to get rid of that. If you missed it, go back and look at this later when it launches. But um, yes, you're able to like really sculpt the face. I have a whole new love for makeup because of COVID and because of being sequestered home, being quarantined with the rest of New York City and having to play on my own face as opposed to working on, working with and on a lot of models. So I realize how powerful and important makeup is and can make you feel, you know, especially through those times when adding a little here. Oh my God, this just doesn't look real. Doesn't even look real. It's just like, it looks like a filter, right? A filtered highlight. It's like, that's not real. They don't have a product that does that. Yes, we do at MAC. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Oh my God, obsessed. All right, since we're here, let's do blush. So I, they're using Frankly Scarlet, right? And I love Rosie Does It. And I was actually playing with this because I had a sample of it. This is universal. This blush works on the lightest to the darkest skin tone. And I'm gonna show you what it does. Rosie Does It is incredible. 
It is my favorite. You've seen me use it on many TikToks. I'm probably going to use it today for something too, but I'm going to use a 168 and my Rosie does it. I bought this one just two days ago in the Queens Center shop at Mac, the Innovation Lab. If you guys are in Queens, go check it out because it is, I didn't want to leave. I want to go back because it's so there's so much technology in the store. I felt like I was playing a video game. It was like being on social media and so many social media opportunities. All right. So applying the blush and for what I did on Lashonda is just making sure that it's on the apple of the cheeks, but blended into that contour, right? Yes. So in, in my notes in the book, it just says smile add to apple of cheek and blend up towards cheekbone. I have to tell you, if you have, <laughs> I'm going to sell this. Are you ready? If you have uneven cheeks, if you have cheeks that are sad and not happy, this is for you. It really make blush is back. I'm telling you a huge trend this season. And please notice this with Lashonda because that's where it started. The floating blush. Can you see it? I'm going to bring mine up a little higher, but it's here. That's right. It didn't just stop. And she does this really well. Lashonda, you take great notes. She's amazing. All right. A little here. Same brush. It's incredible what this does. And I want to tell you, my tip that's going to change your life, especially that we're all wearing masks right now. Because of that, you really, you're not seeing anything down here, but guess what? I'm calling this the floating blush. And it's blush that lives above your eyebrow. And it's amazing. I pointed it out on the IG Live on Mac for the new concept store two days ago because I wore a mask in the store, right? And because of that, I wanted to make sure that my blush was represented. But what it really does is it plays a trick on the eye to go upward, right? And it re people really don't, don't notice it, but it's there. And I love this. So, and it really helps to pull and elongate. Not that I need a longer face. <laughs> because it's already long, but it's just, it just looks so healthy and fresh. So I did that for Mayfair also. I actually did it more towards the side. So I'll bring it down here, but you can bring it right to the top. And I think it works well with today's center part and finger wave. All right, let's cut the shenanigans and get into some lips. All right, so first it's important to do a lip primer. So I'm going to do the Prep and Prime Lip Primer. And super easy. I'm just going to grab a little on my finger. And the trick with this, what's great about the primer is that it'll help your lipstick to last. It'll hydrate the lips and stop it from feathering. It's really important because in this show at the Mayfair Supper Club in Vegas at the Bellagio, um, LaShonda actually has a microphone because it's very sort of vintage to, you know, have be a performer, have a microphone. And because of that, the, it's easy for you to get lipstick on the mic and transfer it back to yourself. So to make sure the lipstick stays in place, I use the Retro Matte Liquid. And first start with the lip primer. Really important, guys. You can see it has a little shine but it's not really shiny. It's a great product for guys too. If you have boyfriends that have dry lips, just get this for them. It looks like a pen. It doesn't look makeup-y and it, it does like a little, it just really hydrates the lip, but look, no shine, really good. Notice that I'm coming out of the lip line all the way, I'm on the skin actually with the product. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't feather going off the skin. So you're creating a barrier with this product, right? Okay, so then a little tip I, I showed Lashana is take your Studio Fix and just pat around your mouth. 
Mm -hmm. Neutralizing the skin around and just locking in. So as I'm looking at the skin now, I'm evaluating and thinking I need a little bit more blush. It's, I love, by transferring some of it up here, it looks great, but especially for performing, it really needs to look, and I'm just oh, layering, 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 layering. Oh my God, this highlight is sick, so good. And again, if you guys think, oh yeah, but he's already got really great skin. You saw what I looked like before. Oh, he's got really sharp angled cheekbones. You guys saw the beginning and you saw my tips and tricks and saw what I did to create it. And it's not like that, but I am using what I have to make it with the right products and really just chiseling everything out. All right, hmm. I'm ready for lips. And what happens is if you wait for a second, and because the powder is over this now, the Studio Fix, it's getting a little tacky, which is, it means time to get it going. So many times the performers don't have time to use a lip pencil. And I'll say, then just throw the lip on. And they know that and it works really well for them because sometimes they're running in or they have changes and rehearsals almost daily that they have to come in because there's some set change or some lighting issue or someone who, couldn't make it in so they have someone else come whatever it is they have a lot of meetings and in many cases I'm sharpening my pencil can you tell um, they have to roll with the punches so they don't always have the amount of time that we do to do this so I am now using Ruby Woo lip pencil which is genius and let's just go over the line. Let's draw, over draw for sure. Let's get a giant glammy lip going. And I'm giving it more of a vintage feel where it's more curved as opposed to pointy. Like a pointy, <laughs> a pointy lip can look more aggressive and curved just looks more approachable. So let's do that. Let's, I'm outside the line here. Look, really outside right same here hi romero it's tiffany hello there <laughs> i'm so sorry to bug you again is mm -hmm. did you say this is ruby woo pencil mm -hmm. or cherry ruby woo you can oh. use you can use cherry also, but Ruby Woo is the one I'm using right now. They're okay. both really great reds, depending on your lip and skin color. But again, with Mac, it's about pigmentation. Look at this. So every skin tone can look the same way. It means that it will show up on everyone, and that's because you have people like me in product development making sure that we have products for everyone. I mean, it's part of Mac's. You know, all ages, all races all genders you know mac is for everybody and it means that it's pigmented and everything shows up you know we have sheer and lightweight transparent products too but when you're designing a look for stage you want it to last you want it to stay in place and i even showed this technique of blending your pencil. Mm. Even that looks great, right? But let's add some fire to this party. And I'm going in with the Feel So Grand. I had the pleasure of using this color uh, on Ukanwa from Matt Cosmetics for the cover of Essence Magazine this March, a few months ago. And she's, maybe Ukanwa might be around an NC55 complexion, right? This was like fire. I knew that she was gonna be in this setting with maybe 12 other executives, beauty executives from around the world. So I decided to, I wanted to make sure that she popped, that she stood out. Same technique, floating blush, same sort of rosiness. I really used my Lashonda as inspiration and this look 
that I created at the Mayfair in Vegas. And it looked incredible. It looked incredible on her. So watch this, just one swipe. It's just, I love this color. I chose this because it's matte, dries down, stays in place, doesn't move, and is long wearing. And that the color is just so intense. How pretty is that? Mm. It's really gorgeous. I'm putting it on in layers just to show you intensity. Mm. And it feels good too. Now I'm very Adams family. <laughs> Look, white collar. So notice that I'm over the lip line. Yeah, uh uh, this is not natural at all. Mmm, yummy. I love this. Tiffany, I've seen you wear red sometimes. This is my color. Are you kidding me? I wear it sometimes. Uh -huh. <laughs> I think it's probably well, every time. Good. I love this product because it's comfortable. It wears mm -hmm. well and the applicator mm -hmm. gets an exact application. And I would probably overdraw. I mean, you've got gorgeous lips. Well, I now I do with this. I, <laughs> I overdraw mine a little bit more. Mm -hmm. Well, you have the option. I have a mustache. There's so much I can do, Tiffany. <laughs> oh my goodness, look how white it makes your teeth. Oh, I love this. This is so good. So good. All right, I need a little bit more. Mm. And now it's like, it's dry. And look, it's not transferring on my teeth. Look how beautiful this is. Okay, stop Romero. Mm. Okay. I think you're good at the lip. Mm. I feel a TikTok coming on. <laughs> I'll have to do one for you later. Okay. While that's drying down, let's get some crystals in place. Crystal. Oh, I have it. It's over here. All right. So we've, we've got these Aurora Borealis. Oh, my goodness. I had to ask Belchick last night. How do you spell Aurora Borealis? <laughs> but now the trick is, guys, that you are using, you can use your black lash glue, but it's better that you use the clear duo. And I like the one with the applicator because you can easily just put a little here. And I thought it would be easier to tell the performers that you can just put a drop of glue here first and then apply. The problem was they put the glue and then look down. <laughs> then the, the, you know, the, the skin just got glued together. So we learned. And we learned to actually use a tweezer, put a little of the glue on. Oop, give it a second to dry. Mm. I love how velvety this feels so grand looks and it makes my teeth so white. I love it. All right. Oh, let's do it. Right here. Booyah. Oh. Mm. Gorgeous. I love this. Next one. Again, it just had to be that the performers can do this every night really easy, really quickly, and they can. <laughs> For this one, I think, let me use my Studio Fix C6 mirror. Let's check it out. Okay, right here. And it's under the lash. Yes. Make any adjustments while you have a minute. Move this one up a little. Mm. Imagine singing and performing and having her turn and watching this beautiful sparkle that happens, right? Insane, 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 insane. So I 
love it. I'm going to freshen up just whatever is left on my blush brush. All right, so this is basically the finished look that we have here with the gorgeous LaShonda, right? From the Mayfair Supper Club in Vegas at the Bellagio. And now with the disco change that they have, what I decided to do was have them apply Dazzle Shadow Liquid in Diamond Crumbles, my favorite, favorite color. And the reason why I like this is, you ready to see this? Right on top, like they would have, they would come downstairs, have a quick change. I think they had maybe 15 minutes that they had to get back upstairs, so they couldn't change lips, they couldn't do anything else, just powder and run. And since this was like a disco, futuristic, futuristic disco session, guys, diamond crumbles in the house. Right? I'm pulling it out a little bit so you get more, there's a little more reading because the library is open. Look at that. Look at, oh yeah. How great, diamond crumbles. So this is the difference here. Right? Go from this gold to this incredible holographic goodness right on top. It's yummy. I love diamond crumbles. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. All right. So the last thing is two seconds, guys. All it is is that we're going to add now glitter. <laughs> it's not necessary, right? But you want to see a difference. And before the diamond crumbles, we're using 3D silver. Ready? Talk about a sparkle. So going from one look to the other, the only change they needed to do was add diamond crumbles and this amazing glitter. I was so proud of this makeup to see the makeup last through the entire session that I've been there for so many shows at the Mayfair and watch the performers just dance and entertain the entire room, walking around the room, sitting down and singing next to people and then going up on the stage, this elevated stage with this lighting and watching that you get this incredible capture of sparkle and color that it's like the makeup itself is performing. And the performers were amazing to work with. The Mayfair Supper Club, No Ceilings, um, the Bellagio, Ashley from MGM. Thank you so much. I'm gonna add a little bit more diamond crumbles and finger, 3D glitter. All right, Tiffany, I think I'm ready for my close-up. So ready. <laughs> so I don't know. Do I need a tie or a top hat? Definitely the hat. Yeah. Let me give you a little bit of curl. Okay, so this is Glam Dandy, 2020. I just love how you're getting all this reflection and I purposefully designed the makeup, especially with the stone underneath, that you get this flow of the center of the eye as you're moving. So I feel like you're following the eye as it's hitting the light spots. And honestly, the room at the Mayfair is gorgeous. Again, I won't tell you how much money they spent, but it was a lot and you could see it in the decor. It is incredible and great food too. So. Ah, Z, thank you for saying that. This is the polished look. We could even throw a little bit more. Um, and maybe, Jake, we can throw up that, the last four images, one with LaShonda on stage so everyone could see as I 
add a bit more of her blush. Yes, there she is, getting ready on set in this gore, the lighting, look at the lighting guys, and look how I'm actually adding her diamond crumbles there and a little glitter, and that's part of her costume. And the bottom of the costume just has these beautiful white plumed feathers, just gorgeousness, and her beautiful earrings, yes. And then, ooh, I'm back. And then let's look at, I think we have another one with her, um, or maybe the, just the last one, up to you. Ah, yes. So let's talk about this a little bit. This is um, the cover of Las Vegas Magazine, and using the blue palette from Art Library, the It's Designer palette, I created again with the same 3D glitter, this vampy deep. And again, this is the disco costume. It's all, it, maybe it weighs about 30 or 40 pounds. It's silver fringe and covered in Swarovski crystals. And I just created this look to go, oh, thank you, Monique, to go with. And it's just, look at the decor a little bit, guys. It's like you step back in time, but it's so gorgeous. I want to go back. Let's do something at the Mayfair Mac Pro. It's going to be amazing when everything opens up and it's gorgeous. Let's show you, since I'm completely done, the final look of LaShonda. So you guys could see that we did pretty good. Yep. There you go. Thank you, Natalie. Yes, LaShonda, gorgeousness. Look at the, the center of the eye, everything's going up, the highlight. And, you know, honestly, you know, for pro members uh, and makeup artists that are out there, it's important to take your own photos because you really know how the makeup should look. And to even show you the, the photo that I have on my Instagram now with the new campaign from Christian Cohen, I, the, photo, the main photo that's there, the close-up of the makeup, I took. So I think it's really important for you to capture makeup from your perspective as the artist because you know how it should look. You have an idea, you know. I realized I didn't even like put, I could keep going. I'm going to stop with this because I think it looks really great. And maybe I should put on my hat from my new favorite hat box of Frosted Firework Collection. How does this look? Tiffany, what do you think? I love it. Who's going to screenshot this so I can repost? I love it. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. How about this one? All right. No, I think I'll just put this one on. All right. We'll do it. So, guys, this was amazing. The music's going to play me out. Thank you for joining us today for Gatsby Glam Halloween, even though this is not Halloween. This is me. This is my everyday. You know that. So we had fun today and let's do more like this with Pro and you. And I'll see you guys next time. I'll dance it out.